This demonstration is going to look at the reaction of copper chloride and aluminum. Here we start with about 2 grams of copper chloride. As you look closer at the copper chloride, you can see it's a blue, bluish green crystalline type substance. To the copper chloride, we're going to add a little bit of aluminum uh, in the form of aluminum foil. You'll need about 0.2 grams to do this experiment. We use just a simple aluminum foil. I like to cut it up into smaller pieces, and I find that it works much better and it reacts much more quickly and readily if you do that. When we're ready to go, the copper chloride is placed in a small beaker. To, to the copper chloride, we're going to add about 25 milliliters of deionized water. It starts off being a greenish color, but as you start to stir it, it, it'll quickly turn more of a lighter blue or turquoise color. At this point, we're ready to add the aluminum. The aluminum that we measured earlier is now poured into the copper chloride solution. You can see it quickly begins to react as a copper forms on the outside of the aluminum. The reaction takes about 15 minutes to complete, so I speeded the video up about 20 times as fast uh, as it normally would be seen. You can see the, a lot of bubbles forming right above the water level. This reaction is very exothermic and lets off a lot of heat, uh, so some of the water gets turned into water vapor and then recondenses on the outside. Uh, you can see the copper uh, growing on the aluminum foil that was suspended in the solution. As, I, as you stir it, a lot of the copper starts to sink to the bottom. You know there's still time needed for the reaction because you'll still see uh, the aluminum floating on the top of the solution. Uh, here, most of the copper is all sunk, so you know the reaction is complete. A vacuum filtration is used to separate the copper out from the rest of the solution. When you turn the water on, the aspirator creates a vacuum inside of our vacuum flask, and a filter paper is placed on the inside. It's usually a good idea to weigh the filter paper before doing the filtration. Our copper solution is then dumped into the Buchner funnel, which is on top of the filter flask, and then rinsed briefly with water uh, to get all of the copper that's off the sides of the beaker. Once the reaction is complete, we still have all of our copper in our Buchner funnel, and we're ready to take it out and dry it so we can weigh it when we're all done. I used a scoopula to help me get the filter paper out of the Buchner funnel. Uh, I then placed it on a watch plate so I could dry it overnight. In order to get all the water out of the copper so that when we weigh it we get an accurate weight of copper, you can either place it in a desiccator like we see here and let it dry over a few days. Uh, another option, if you have it available, is to put the watch plate and copper inside of a lab oven, something like you would see here. Whatever option you choose will work fine. When it's all dry, you can weigh your copper and get a final yield. Mine turned out to be about 75%. You can see a little bit of green on the copper present. That's from the copper oxidizing in the air, forming copper oxide much like you would see on the Statue of Liberty, which was originally a copper statue.